I am on the road to Hajang from Long San today, a place that I had never traveled to but was worth the experience nonetheless. I had all of my camera gear stolen off the back of my motorcycle and I am currently filming on my iPhone which I had to resort to for the entire time in Vietnam. I'm about 20 miles outside of Long San. You can see it's getting absolutely beautiful. Wanted to pull over and shoot a quick clip. Traveling solo through Nam is no joke, man. Uh, the language barrier was quite intense. Um, I kind of felt lonely yesterday. It's been a minute since I've kind of felt like, oh, wow, you know, I'm struggling out here. But, you know, that's all part of the traveling experience. And that's what makes it more special is the stories that only you can tell and the things that you overcome on your solo travel journey. So here on the side of the road, beautiful start to the trip. As we meander on down, we're just gonna keep pumping them. Let's go. If you've ever traveled through Vietnam, you will notice that there are Vietnamese flags hanging everywhere. I mean, thousands of them. It is so wild to think how many flags they have up. All right, guys, so I'm in some tiny, tiny, small Vietnamese town. I don't even really know what it's called. I just saw a spot to get a bomb me. We're gonna get a bomb me. I've been pulling over a lot shooting videos um, you know that's the thing about being in northern Vietnam that it's just so beautiful the scenery is incredible you just want to pull over every 10 seconds because it's just always so good so I'm slowing myself down by doing this hopefully I get a lot of good stuff but um, yeah gonna check out this bomb me place and get back on the road all right so honestly guys that's the worst bomb me I've ever had I had to let that uh, semi go by it's the worst bomb me I've ever had I paid 10K for the Bami and 5K for this, so it's also probably the cheapest. Um, but yeah, it's horrendous. So that's the price you pay when you're in the middle of nowhere. You don't get the best food in Vietnam. So these kids wanted to get a selfie with me. Um, yeah, and so we take selfies when we're in Vietnam, so. Thanks guys. Come on, Tam Viet. Bye bye. <laughs> the roads got pretty gnarly throughout some of this journey. Google Maps wasn't necessarily knocking it out the park for me either. Um, I got turned around quite a few times, had to guess a couple of times at where I was actually going and just roll the dice, you know. But traveling through areas like this in rural Vietnam, it's things you're only gonna do once, things you're only gonna see once, and you know, it just has its shares of ups and downs, man. You just gotta roll with the punches in Nam, um, right? It's starting to get hot, guys. Kind of getting out of the mountains but we actually made it onto a paved road so that's good for now this so beautiful all the different lush greens of vietnam and uh you know everything that you see and all the little back roads and everything that you go through really makes the trip on the motorcycle it makes it longer makes it a little more stressful but it makes the trip like i said guys flag after flag after flag northern Vietnam everywhere even in the most deserted back roads they are hanging everywhere which I think is actually cool um, you know I just don't know how they got so many flags out there and how they keep up with them but cool to see nonetheless keeps getting prettier and prettier um, as I've said you just keep pulling over and checking things out things take time or probably take me two days to make it hot song at this rate whatever we got the time uh i'm loving being out in the sun i love seeing new things and let's keep going i also can't stress enough just how important it is to be careful on these roads they are crazy in vietnam vietnam's traffic is no joke it's not safe to drive on the road in vietnam it is hectic and it's one of those things where you just have to learn how to read energy there's no real traffic lights or anything in Vietnam. You just have to learn how to read energy and go and never stop. Like you just have to keep going. So we pulled over to attempt Bam Mi number two. This is in a more populated place with a Vietnamese woman. I think it's just gonna be egg. Hopefully they slap. I'm getting kind of hungry. And yeah, the last one you guys saw, I didn't even touch it. So Bam Mi number two, I'm gonna have two of them and hopefully get some, nah, some ice water. So. That's what's gonna be for lunch before we get back on the road. This one already looks significantly better. Significantly better, I haven't even tasted it. Everything about it is like a real bomb meat. So we're going with it, let's check it out. I'll finish this one. Mm. And for good reason, because it's delicious. So 
from in Thai, Nguyen. Nguyen, I don't know how you pronounce that. I know it's a very popular last name and name in Vietnamese. Uh, but I just had to pull over and have some coffee at the shop, two cafe sodas. I was getting tired. This actually seems to be like a pretty decently sized city. Um, I might consider staying here if it was later in the day, but I've got more ground to cover. But uh, yeah, man, this is like the first major, I guess, Vietnamese little town city that I've driven through since on the road to Ha Zan. And uh, it's kind of refreshing because I needed some coffee. And um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna get back on the road. I've still got four and a half hours to Ha Zan, so let's go. As the sun was starting to go down, I ended up getting on a pretty decent road and ended up getting to see some cool things. There was on this monument built here. I'm not quite sure why. Um, pretty cool to drive underneath it. And yeah, man, I mean, it's good to be on paved roads because a lot of the day I wasn't on paved roads. As I kept going, I ended up stumbling across this lake, which really reminded me of my home in Tennessee called Watauga Lake. It was very beautiful. Found these beautiful lakes, <clears throat> just saw, it says View Ho, I guess, on the side. Had to pull over and, and see it. it. It reminds me so much of Tennessee, uh, where I'm from, Watauga Lake. It looks just like it with the mountains and the lake. Absolutely breathtaking. The sun's going down. Riding a motorcycle into, the, into another Vietnamese sunset. And what a pleasure it is to just be alive, be back here in Vietnam, be exploring new things and living life, man. I hope everybody's doing good. This little stretch of road reminds me a lot of Saigon. The trees aren't as tall, but it definitely kind of has the same vibe if you've been to that city. Very, very cool to say the least. Ah, so the Vietnamese kids, speak some English for them. Nah, you nervous to speak English now? Nah, all right, they were just speaking English. They don't want to speak English anymore, but Vietnam. Guys, I just got stopped by the Vietnamese police. That was super crazy. I never even would have think that that would happen. Uh, they like pulled up on a motorcycle, one on the back. They had a camera and everything, told me to pull over. Obviously no English was spoken. They kept pointing it. I had my headphones in. I don't know, I guess it's not cool, but like I think they were just messing with me. They didn't give me a ticket or anything, but I don't understand. You can tell I'm kind of shaken up. It's just really weird because they were like filming everything and uh, yeah, they stopped me and sent me on my way. So quite a weird situation nonetheless, but we're gonna keep traveling, but I don't know, kind of shaking up. Was never expected to get stopped by the police in Vietnam, especially in the middle of nowhere on the way to Ha Zhan. All right, so I found a room for the night. It getting increasingly more dangerous. Um, traveling on the road, for those of you that have traveled Vietnam at night, it gets pretty crazy on the motorcycle. It already is crazy enough during the day. Guys, I just had the worst sleep of my entire life in this, uh, I guess, I, I don't know what this is, I guess hotel homestay, man. You can hear the cicadas outside, they are so loud. They were all night. They started weed eating outside, 6.30 in the morning. It's 6.30 in the morning, bro. I didn't go to bed till 1 a.m. I feel like tired and gross. Um, but yeah, I mean, whatever, bro, this is Vietnam. And, it is what it is. So we're headed, uh, we're headed to Ha Zan, getting on the loop today, man. So I need to get going. I'm gonna show y'all this beautiful, beautiful homestay, but it was not a good night's sleep. So this homestay was quite beautiful. It ended up being really expensive after having multiple coffees the night before, having dinner, having breakfast, paying for my room, getting water and everything. I think honestly my total was close to 650k, which I mean when you really think about it is not a lot of money. I mean maybe $29, I think, 30 bucks in US and for everything that I got <laughs> it is cheap, cheap, cheap. But in Vietnam, that's that's a substantial amount of money to spend on a place to stay and food. You know, a lot of the times that I've stayed in hostels, I've stayed in hostels for three to four dollars that have free breakfast and one free coffee in the morning. And, um, you know, we're definitely better conditions. Um, the cicadas were so loud in the mountains that it was almost deafening. It did not matter what you did. You could not escape how loud they were. I have never in my life heard thundering cicadas like that. They kept me up all night. Vietnam, baby, what a time to be alive, what a place to be traveling. 
here on the side of the road we took off from our homestay probably an hour and a half outside of Hajong. Gorgeous views, man. Got the river behind me. And yeah, just taking it in, just being alive, man. Just feeling so grateful to be back here and, and traveling. So as we continue on down the road, we've almost made it to Hajong. It's been a hell of a journey so far and we will start the loop sometime today. They got me, said I was speeding, had me on camera. I don't believe it, 900,000 Vietnamese dong. They were threatening to take both my licenses. I told them I didn't have the money. They were threatening to take my license. Then they threatened to take my bike when I tell them I don't have the money. Real turn off for Vietnam. Um, I spent all a month here last year, never had a problem. Been pulled over twice in the past two days. A money grab, 900,000 Vietnamese dong. That is outrageous, man. What a crock of fucking shit. Like, I'm just sick to my stomach, man. Like, I, I it's just crooked in Southeast Asia how they can take you, take you like that. Uh, 900,000 Vietnamese dong. This is a souvenir. Even if you have your international driver's permit, they gonna get you criminal. So I was really, really bitter about getting that ticket. And I'm not gonna say that I wasn't speeding, but they pulled over multiple foreigners. A couple of them were coming back from Laos and they said that we were all doing 72 and a 60. And if I'm keeping it honest with y'all, I wasn't aware that there was any speed limit out there. I didn't see any signs for a speed limit. And if you've driven through Vietnam, what, what laws are you talking about? That's what I wanted to say to the police officer. What are you talking about? Do you see this, this road traffic? Do you see how this thing happens? you see how this flows? There ain't no laws out here. Don't be pulling me over, messing with me like this. You pulled me over last night for no reason whatsoever. For no reason whatsoever. And not a single word of English was exchanged. And I didn't expect for there to be. But it's like, you're messing with me. And it's like, I don't have any grounds to argue with you. We're having to do all of this via Google Translate. I realize I'm in your country. I'm a guest in your country. And you're just going to extort me for money. I've had it happen in multiple countries. I had it happen in Cambodia. I've had it happen in Thailand. Now I've had it happen in Vietnam. 900K. And I just wasn't happy about that because, like I said, I just spent 650K in a place to stay in. 1.5 million dong in two days in Vietnam is a lot of money. Anybody who tells you it isn't is tripping. You know, you can get by on pennies on the dollar in Vietnam. And 1.5 million dong is at least four solid days of backpacking money if, if you're doing it right and you're, and you're watching your spending. So I was upset about that. It's all good. I paid it. I went on my day. But, you know, it's like, come on. Guys, we made it to Ha Chang. Despite getting a ticket, despite everything in between, we are here. We are ready to start the Ha Chang loop. What a journey it has been from my song. Yeah, I mean, it's had its fair share of ups and downs. Um, doing eight and a half hours through Vietnam on a motorcycle is not easy, and anyone who says it is is lying. Being stopped by the police twice, getting a ticket almost 40 US dollars. You know, I'm alive, I'm well, everything is good, God is good. And we're here in Ha Chang, man, ready to start this loop for the second time and, and hopefully put out some great content for y'all. If you want to follow along, like, comment, subscribe. If anything, I'm wishing you the absolute best. Wishing you, you know, nothing but happiness. And, and hoping that you're content with your life and who you are. And we're moving forward. This is Josh B. Traveling. Stay tuned for the next one. You know the drill by now. For real. Like, comment, subscribe. Catch you soon, gang. I'm out.